kind of looked at each other, sitting my boy focus came out, and we're like, okay, this is probably the one. Like, Badass yeah, right there, for so, sure. Uh, they were immediately talking to me about, uh, oh, you know, what type of stuff do you watch on TV? So when we go out on tour, you know, find out what's, uh, what shows we're going to be able to get along. Plus, I also knew that Zoltan was an MMA guy. Right. So I wore a wore a Muay Thai shirt. That way I'd be able to spark up a little conversation. Sure. Very smart. And, uh, yeah, just that night uh, I went home feeling pretty confident. I was like, yes, I got it. And uh, the next day behind the bar at the Cosmopolitan, I got a text from Zoltan walking through the van. Wow. As I'm working behind the bar. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty badass cool, dude. It gets even better, actually. Oh, hang on. Yeah, this is There's fun. a little more. This is fun. Chris, Chris Kale here. The, the whole first summer that I was out there doing Death Punch, we were basically doing radio festivals. So we do two shows on a weekend, be off a week, do two shows the next weekend. And it was all just fly dates at that point. So I liked my job at the Cosmopolitan so much, I would literally go do those uh, gigs with Death Punch, <laughs> playing in front of 15,000 people at festivals, and then on Monday morning, be right back behind the bar, bartending at the, uh, the Cosmo. Wow. So, yeah, just, uh, I was definitely living two different worlds. Absolutely. Yeah, the weekend warrior with Death Punch, and right back to serving mojitos at the uh, Cosmopolitan. And can you still make a good mojito? I definitely can. I Let's definitely go can. right now make a mojito. No, <laughs> right. My drink of choice is the uh, Maker's Mark Old Fashioned. I kill it. You can find that. Yes, I kill it. Yes. Still with the Halford track, bro. Oh, and last guy's uh, new album out. Oh yeah. Uh, again, do re refresh everyone's memory because I can't remember because I've had a couple. But uh, what, <laughs> the, the, it's a double album, double yeah. double thing. Double no one, album. No one does this. No. no one does it. And originally we wanted to put the thing out all on July 30th. But what we're doing now is putting one out on the 30th. I don't want out later in the year. Um, originally, we wanted to call it the wrong side of heaven for one of them and the righteous side of hell for the second one. But we just ended up going with the wrong side of heaven and the righteous side of hell, right. volumes one and two. Right. World's longest uh, album title ever. Oh, I think it but, is. Yeah. So I think it is. Um, and I'll say this uh, for me, meeting Chris, you know, a year ago, eight months, nine months ago, we would always hang out at, at certain places, and I would always see Chris. And I go, hey, that's that guy, that's that guy. And yeah. I would always bother him, not bother him, I'd always say, say hi. And that's how we became friends over there. And we, literally, you, you meet Vinnie Paul, whoever it would be. Oh, yeah. And uh, I remember we, I think we were at Slaughter together one night. Slaughter, or Vince Neal. <laughs> I think it was Slaughter. Slaughter. I didn't see Vince Neal, but okay. I did see Slaughter. Let's go to Slaughter. Yeah. And, and Chris is sitting in this bar. What was that? What was it, that? it was over at Texas Station, I think. Texas Station. Yeah, I forget the name of the room. And she's sitting there being very cool, and I'm just an idiot. And I go, hey, dude, hey, Chris, what's happening? And we became friends. Mm -hmm. and, but we sat at, at Vamp one night, and Chris goes, Johnny, got a great story for you. And yep. I said, I don't want to hear it until one day, one day I'll meet you yep. with what I'm doing right now. And now you believe this, oh, yeah. which is very cool. <laughs> and uh, it's a great story. A guy from Kentucky. Yep. And anyone out there, any kids out there, listen to this story, you, anyone can do it, man. You just gotta persevere. Yeah, correct? Yeah. The, the thing is, listen to your inner voice. It'll tell you. You know, it's, there's a lot of stuff that clouds that inner voice, but listen to it. It'll never lie to you. You know, it might not be music that you want to do, but you know, whatever. Listen to that inner voice, follow it, go after it. Nobody's gonna give you anything. You're right. Go out there, take the chances, don't be safe. Go oh, yeah. after it and get it. I mean, even from way back in the day when I was doing bands back in Kentucky, um, everybody else would, you know, try to get, would, would hope to get gigs opening up for national bands. I actually went right to the club, hey, I got this band, you got anything open right now? Right. And right. that's, it all kind of started there for me, just kind of jumping on things and, and being proactive and going after it. That's a great way to say it. That's 100% a great way to say it. And, and Get us an ID. Oh, oh well, a fantastic <laughs> feel-good story from, from Chris Kale. And what we're going to do right now, we're going to, this is all recording, we can edit all this stuff. Can sure. we get Chris Kale from Five Finger to say, you're listening to Loaded Radio. I say, well, my name is Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch. You're listening to Loaded Radio. You're listening to Loaded Radio. What's up, guys? This is Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch, and you're listening to Loaded Radio. That's awesome. That's awesome. LoadedRadio.com. Get, get a thing right here. Perfect. Do a LoadedRadio.com. Loaded. LoadedRadio.com with Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch. Badass motherfucker right here. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs>